Let's talk about the expectations versus the reality of being a data scientist. When I first started out in data science, I had little idea on what a data scientist actually did. I had all of these misleading expectations of the role and of the tech industry at large from watching all of these day in the life videos on YouTube. So it turns out in real life, you don't actually take a break every two minutes for coffee or a snack. Today, I'll debunk the most common misconceptions about being a data scientist so that I can give you a realistic idea about the job. And stay tuned to the very end so that you can find out about the perks at the tech company and whether or not it's as good as it seems. I'm Saman Ver, a data scientist living in Sydney, Australia. When I first started out, I used to think that data scientists did a lot of maths and statistics on the job. This was the impression I got after doing a lot of online data science courses, which went through a lot of equation derivation for machine learning algorithms. In reality, it is only partially true. Sure, you need to have a basic grasp of hypothesis testing, data distribution, along with some other basic stats and linear algebra, but you definitely won't be working with a lot of maths and statistics every single day. Some companies are so early in their data science journey that you can definitely get away with just an adequate understanding of basic university level maths. And if you need to know any topic that you don't yet understand, then you're more than free to study up and learn the required material to solve the problem at hand. Don't forget that as a data scientist, you will be paid to learn whatever is necessary to get the job done. And given that data science is a combination of machine learning, computer science, and statistics, and you'll be doing a little bit of each section because at the end of the day, you're not supposed to be a mathematician. As a data scientist, you're hired to solve the problem in the simplest way possible and not using the most mathematical way. This leads me to the next expectation, which was that data scientists use model most of the time. This was again due to watching a lot of you YouTube videos and doing a lot of online data science courses. All of them focus so much on models that it's easy to think that that's what data scientists do every single day. In reality, that's far from the truth. Majority of your time will actually be going into curating data sources, data cleaning, and making the systems around your model. Yes, modeling will be part of it, but it'll only take around 10 to 20% of your time. The rest will be more mundane tasks. And you should also know that majority of your data science projects won't be that well defined. So a large part of the job is working with your stakeholders to defining the problem definition and the desired outcome. This is very different to Kaggle challenges where you're presented with an almost perfect data set that is ready to go with a clear problem to solve. And majority of the data science conducted in a commercial environment is data centric rather than model centric. This means that you'll be spending more time getting data into a workable state and working on systems around the data set. If you're enjoying the video so far, then consider subscribing. I make weekly videos about demystifying the land of data science. The next expectation I had as a data scientist was that you'd get to work with a lot of cutting edge machine learning algorithms. This is quite easy to think, especially after you see all of these news articles talking about DeepMind or OpenAI's latest AI algorithms. In reality, most of the commercial data science world will be using basic ML algorithms such as logistic regression or tree-based algorithms instead of neural networks or transformers. The reason for this is simplicity. Algorithms like neural networks are black box algorithms, meaning that you have no idea how the algorithm is making its decision when it gives you an output. This is a problem in the commercial data science world where you have to explain the outcomes of your model and its workings to senior stakeholders at a company who are not as technical. In some industries, there's even regulation that prevent data scientists from using anything too fancy. For example, if a bank were to use neural networks to figure out whether or not they should give a loan to a certain individual, then there can be a lot of questions raised, especially when you don't know how the neural network is making its decisions because it could be discriminating on certain attributes or features of of a given customer. So in a lot of these scenarios, the banks will usually opt for simpler algorithms that are easier to explain, like logistic regression or linear regression. Following on to the next expectation, it's that 
Data scientists work on computer all day long. Well, this is true to some extent given we have been working from home for the past two years in this global pandemic. But when you're in the office, you'll be in a lot of meetings, especially stakeholder meetings. Again, this can vary from company to company, but currently 40% of my time is in meetings. This can be sprint planning meetings or stakeholder meetings. For example, if I'm building a data science solution for the marketing team, then my main stakeholders are the members of that team. Sure, I create the data science solution, but it's my responsibility to take the marketing team on a journey with me. It's not like you go away and work on a data solution and then come back after two months with a result. You definitely need to do weekly updates with your stakeholders on the status of your data solution. You could say that being a data scientist is a very active role that requires you to be strong in communication. And if you don't enjoy talking to people, then this is probably not the best role for you. Another common misconception about being a data scientist is that you're a one-man army or the person that does everything in the data science cycle. You can be forgiven for thinking that because there's so many job ads out there where they want unicorn data scientists, someone that can do it all. This might be true in smaller companies where they're just getting started with data science. But in larger companies, there'll be entire data science teams where you'll be working with software engineers, data engineers, machine learning engineers, and other data scientists. Even if you're in a small team as the only data scientist, there's plenty of other teams to work with and other stakeholders to engage with. No role in tech will ever require you to work in a silo. Working in any organization is always about teamwork. The final expectation you might have is that Working as a data scientist in the tech industry means a lot of amazing perks. Perks that will make your work life a lot better. To some extent, it's true. At one of the tech companies I worked for, we got our monthly phone bill and gym membership paid for. And not to mention, there were plenty of free snacks and drinks to be had in the kitchen along with breakfast. And when we were in the office, we had monthly social events where food and drinks were all paid for. Now, we didn't get lunch or dinner like some of the other fancy tech companies but it was a pretty sweet deal on the flip side no matter how many perks you get you will acclimatize to them eventually and no amount of perks really compensates for the work or the quality of your workmates so always pick a company not on the basis of the perks but rather on the type of work you'll be doing and the type of colleagues you'll have because those are the things you're going to remember not really the fancy perks you get because if you don't have great colleagues to work with then work isn't so fun anymore and given the pandemic office perks make no difference whatsoever that's it for today if you enjoyed the video then smash that like button and i'll see you next time